okay, whether you want to talk about the Ten Commandments or whether you want to talk about the law of love. It all condemns us because we don't keep the law. We try and we fail and then we go away feeling condemned because we've been told that and what it's all about is trying to be good people and better people and we all know down inside that's not what we are. And so we feel guilty. And i got good news for you because Paul says to us here in the book of Romans that there's been, that the gospel message is that a righteousness has been revealed from God by faith, not by works. That to get into the kingdom of God, it's not about just trying harder and trying to keep more laws, trying to be more loving, trying to be kinder, because we all fail at that. It's about faith in Jesus Christ. That the grace of God that can come to us and forgives us and cleanses us. That the gospel message is good news. The word gospel in Greek means good news. The good news is it's not based on our works. It's based on what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. And the grace of God that comes to us. Salvation is by faith, not by works, Paul says. Let me read that passage again here to you that we read just a minute ago. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. You see, the good news of the gospel is, is that our salvation, uh, uh, our entrance in our part of the kingdom is not based on how well we keep the law of God. We've already shown ourselves we don't do that very well. But it's based on the fact that God, through Jesus Christ, has extended His grace to us. And that you and I can lay hold on it by faith. We saved by faith, not by our works. It shouldn't surprise us that salvation should be based on faith. Because you see, that was the question always from the very beginning. You remember the garden back in the Garden of Eden, the stories of how God had told Adam and Eve that they could eat of all the trees, the fruit of all the trees in the garden, except for the one in the center. And the day they ate of that one, they would die. And I don't know why they hung around, because if you look at the dimensions given in the Bible, the Garden of Eden, it spanned thousands of square miles. It went all the way from the Tigris and Euphrates all the way into where Jerusalem and Palestine was and covered all of that area through there. And so that's a huge area. You would wonder with all that big area and all those trees to choose from, what in the world were they doing hanging around the tree in the middle? Did you ever wonder about that? I suppose they were a lot like you and me. I, 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 I don't know about you, but I, I know if it was Nan or Roger and I, if you tell us not to do something, that's the thing we want to do, isn't it? It's, it's just like, it attracts us, doesn't it? If you're told you can have everything in the store, but you can't have this, that's the thing you want more than anything else in the world. It just seems to be our nature, isn't it? And something drew them to it, but here's what happened when they got there. It says that Satan, the serpent, said to them, has God said you can't eat of all the trees in the garden? And, and they said, no, we can eat of all of them except for this one. And if we eat of this one, God says we'll die. And you remember what he said? He said, no, you won't die. God knows that if you eat of this, you're going to become wise. You're going to be able to decide good from evil. Now here's the question. Does God tell the truth? Or not? 
See, it's a faith question. Can I believe God when God says something to me? Can I believe it? And the Bible says he looked at it and it looked good. And after all, Satan and the serpent had said that it would make her wise. So that was something to want. And so the question is, who's telling the truth? And the moment she took the fruit, she's saying, I don't believe I can trust God. And that's when sin came into the world. Church surprises them. That salvation should be based on whether or not we're willing to believe God. Because God has said, your sins are forgiven through Jesus Christ. And the question we wrestle with is, can I believe God? Can I trust what he says? Can I simply come to Christ and give myself to Christ? and accept what he's done for me and know that my name's written in the book of heaven and, and, and that I have eternal life. Can I trust God or not? It's a faith question. Should surprise us. But what he asks of us is we believe me. Will you trust me? He said no. And she walked away. What are you going to say this morning? You see, this is the point at which Christianity is separated from all the religions of the world because every other religion of the world is a religion based on works. There's no savior in Hinduism. There's no savior in Buddhism. There's no savior in Islam. It's all about the works. Do this. Try harder. Go deeper. Take this pilgrimage. Do this. Do that. Do the other. Christianity says, no, you're not any good at works. You don't keep the law very well. You only do it some of the time. And you never keep all of it. But now salvation is given to us through faith in a Savior. No wonder the Bible says the only way to do it is through Jesus Christ. It's got to be a faith. We can't earn it. We can't deserve it. We can only believe. And the question I want to ask you this morning is simply this. Did you believe what God has said? And are you willing to trust your life? Thank you.